Welcome back, it's your boy, Gat Cognac, back with another video. So, um, been MIA for a little bit, um, you know, got some stuff been going through, but yeah, man, try to like post a couple things while I can, but yeah. Anyways, I'm gonna start off with something I haven't done or haven't really done in a while. Uh, basically to talk about a movie review or TV show review and the topic is going to be Twisted Metal the TV series on Peacock alright so you know how I feel about most game movie adaptations you know so I always go up into like the these adaptations with I don't know no expectations or at the same time, like, you know, like, ah, just going thinking it's going to be hella weak and, you know, and it's going to be like a nice time killer, something just to, to waste my time with. And that's how I do a lot of them. So I don't get really disappointed. Some of them still like kind of irk me, but, you know, most times I don't care. It's just whatever, because after you hype yourself so many times with um a movie that you like you're like excited for especially if something that you really like and is an adaptation of you're like man you know the letdown kind of same way I, I do with my video games it's like i don't hype stuff up because like i don't want to be overhyped man so that way you're not disappointed or as disappointed so anyways um yeah i went in watching you know watching twisted metal and I remember watching it with my girlfriend. I was like, let's, let's watch this, man. And, you know, we were pleasantly surprised, man. Yeah, you, you guys think I'm supposed to be making like some, some rant video or something like that. But, nah. This this video is actually going to be something more of a, a, a praise video, you know. Anyways, um, if you guys didn't know, Twisted Metal especially part two just twisted metal in general like was one of my favorite series it's one of like the games that actually like got me really playing games and twisted metal 2 was one of like basically just one of the best uh in the series you know twisted metal black you know stuff like that was was good too but twisted metal 2 was the game Number one was all right as well, but number two was just, was my thing. Especially at the co-op, uh, story storyline was, was, was just kind of funny and it was, it was a tough and tough as nails type of game. So that's a little backstory about the game for those who've never played it. I highly recommend it. Um, so I'm going to try to keep it spoiler free for this little review. Um, but no guarantees all right let's just say that i'll try to keep it to the minimal so that way you guys will watch it and and you know get your own thing those who have played the games you know you guys already kind of know what to expect anyways let's start so what i liked about it was um you first get into the story and i kind of already know like anthony mackie is the main character in in the show and like i'm already like hmm, who's he supposed to play you know, he's got a red car and all that. He, he's got to be roadkill. His character's named John Doe, but like they don't really like really hint that he's like supposed to be roadkill. But you kind of just expect like, yeah, he's got to be roadkill, you know. So those that have played the game, you guys know roadkill's one of the characters. He's like a bum basically, um, or at least most of the time he plays as a bum, like in part two and all that. Anyways. Um, plus he has, he's like the only one with a red car. So, he's driving around, and you guys seen in the trailer, he's got this like Subaru, like a, uh, Impreza or something like that, or WRX. 
one of the cars one of the cars I always wanted when I was young anyways so you know it's pretty interesting I was like pretty intrigued at how they would set this game or set this uh, series up because you know like, you can't just like start a, a, a movie like the game and be like BAM you know they're all starting in a tournament or something like that without building no backstory to it so they actually built like some form of backstory where you know it's kind of like apocalypse already kind of end of the world and basically those cities and encampments that set up they're kind of closed off to the world almost like fallout if you played that game um, very similar to like a post-apocalyptic type of uh, setting so um, pretty much you have Anthony Mackie's character he's like basically a delivery driver they call him like milkman and all that stuff and he's one of the people that you know he doesn't have access to like the main city so he just got, kind of survives around and you know people can be kind of crazy like any post apocalyptic setting and stuff like that so he's got to deal with all that um so like yeah so it's basically the world's already over that's the main story so that sets it up and kind of like kind of ushers in you know more of the character building in the series and which is cool because like I've seen like people complain like I read some of the views like oh man there's not enough like action and and there was just too much like like story building and stuff and I'm like man you know some of the people don't know how to separate themselves from video games and movies or film you, know, you gotta have that balance you know what I mean so it's like yeah there was a lot of character building building because there's a lot of characters in Twisted Metal especially the game and so yeah you're gonna have to have some of that in order for like people to follow that doesn't know the story to follow the story you know what I mean whereas like there's some like hardcore people that they just want to see car action all day and come on dude you know what I mean? There's a reason why this is film. This is a series instead of a movie, you know, so they can have more time to build on that. Because there's actually a lot in Twisted Metal, like especially the games, to actually go on. And so I didn't mind that, you know, as a movie watcher of myself, you do want to have some character building so that you actually give a damn about the characters. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Anyways, apart from that. Um, the series, you know, has comedy, it has a darkness to it. I didn't think it was as dark as, say, like, Twisted Metal Black. A lot of people started into that series. So it's like that series, which the film or the, the series actually took a lot from, I'd say, Twisted Metal 2 and Twisted Metal Black. So a lot of those two, they've taken from, as you can see, like, from the trailer, like, Sweet Tooth, um... He's like one of the main, more more main characters, but he's more like one of what you would call like the main villain characters. And they were pretty faithful to him according to the Twisted Metal uh, Black game. So like literally like his whole concept was built off of that game, which is cool. Because I'd say like as far as the other Twisted Metals before that were very animated, like especially even with like... um. The characters and stuff like that they were very like animated but twist metal black gave them more of like a humanistic um approach you know what i mean so they're very you know they use like human characters and all that stuff so it's easy f easier for whoever made the series to base it mostly on that game but as we're going to talk about um i don't want to talk about too much of the characters i feel like you guys should just watch it and get to the characters, but I feel like it had good character building and had good amount of characters, but a lot of Easter eggs too. So you could definitely tell the people that made this actually played the game. And that's the thing about a lot of like directors or, or whatever producers, they don't play the game. You know what I mean? So, or they'll just probably like watch some bs like gameplay and then try to make it how they want to make it but i gotta give them credit man i gotta give them credit for actually 
putting so many Easter eggs in the game. Like the first part of the, like the first five minutes into the show, like bam, you know, um, Anthony Mackie's character like crashes into a, a electronics boutique, you know. So the setting is still like the world ended like right around the 90s and stuff like that. So like everything you see is still like you see Radio Shack, you see Electronics Boutique or EB Games. Um, you see like all the stuff according to the 90s, which that's when the games first came out, right? So anyways, Anthony Mackie drives through like a base of EB Games and then bam, the game Twisted Metal like lands on his, you know, uh, windshield. And it's just like, man, it was a lot of fun. It was a fun watch, man. Nothing too serious, but at the same time, you know, it went with the game, right? So, as far as, like, most of the settings of the games, they're, like, tournaments. And as this one, it kind of built to it. So, we're going to fast forward to the end. If you fast forward to the end, they set it up. They set it up for a part two, right? They set it up for a, a second season, which I hope they come out with. I hope I got enough intention where they could could get a part two to it because that's where actually the Twisted Metal, um, I'm just gonna spoil a little bit. They're gonna set it up where it's actually gonna be a tournament. All right, so that's gonna be a, tw a Twisted Metal tournament as far as like, you know, they've already had a bunch of appearances of different characters. Like one of the main guys in uh, Twisted Metal, like the main, main, what do you, I don't know what you call calling the bad guys, but the guy that, you know, basically is it's center around is um, Calypso. So they never showed him, but as far as I like the way where they're taking it, and I hopefully they use like uh, Calypso's image from Twisted Metal 2, because that's how I always remember Calypso as, and not some like bald dude or whatever. So they have that in there, which they're going to show in the second season. Which I'm like, alright, cool. Because I'm interested in seeing like how they're gonna like put that his character in the, the the series because Calypso in the video game is like, you know, he could grant you any wish you want, right? And but he's like the wish master. Uh, so if you win the tournament, Calypso is gonna be able to like get you anything. But if you don't ask for it specifically. He's going to, like I said, like the wish master, he's going to warp your, your, uh, wish, you know, and he'll most likely have you end up like dying or, or end up, is going to be messed up. So I don't know how, how he's going to, or how they're going to put that in there because like the stuff he does, like is literally, man, you know, he's using, he's doing magical stuff in the, in the game. So like in the series, like is it is he gonna do like some magical stuff or he's just gonna like give you a prize or something like that, but it's gonna be a twisted prize. So I don't know. We'll see where it heads with that. So because there's a few things in the series you're like, man, he's like like okay, you know, I guess I could do that. But I won't spoil that stuff, man. But um like I said, there was a ton of Easter eggs in it, man. If I sit down and just name them all to you, it'd kind of be like, man, you know. But that's why I just gave you the first one. This was Metal Box. Um, they do mention a lot of things from the game, stuff like that too. And like I said, because it was set in the 90s, it was a fun watch for me because, you know, I'm, I'm like a 90s kid. I grew up in the 90s and it was very nostalgic to for them to set like the whole soundtrack and all the things they mentioned was like stuff that, you know, folks in the 90s grew up with so if you guys grew up in the 90s you'll definitely enjoy it man um as far as like you know vehicular combat and all that stuff it was cool um they had a decent amount for me because you know they can't be like the game where every single scene is like you're stuck in a car like you can't have character development if you're just driving all damn day you know what i mean so of course uh anthony mackie's character and there's a female lead in it also and at first i was like oh man i'm gonna do some woke stuff but you know what surprisingly i didn't see any like real woke you know overly woke what do you call it like themes in there which i'm like cool you know because this this series was actually made by peacock so it's kind of like their way of getting like folks to watch it because 
is a Peacock exclusive. And Peacock's only five bucks a month. Like you can just pay five bucks, watch the whole series. That's cheaper than going to movies. So I like the direction that Peacock's going instead of like Netflix, because Netflix is just messing everything up. Like everything they they everything they put out is basically, you know, an agenda, right? Or some some stupid like politically motivated crap. Um, I didn't really see much of that in, in Peacock's Twisted Metal series, you know, at first I thought, oh, they're going to do it, but no, they didn't, you know, which is great. So, um, you know, I'm going to give you that spoiler anyways. It's like, all right, at the beginning, you know, you see Anthony the Mackie character and those who play the games probably be like, oh, that's roadkill, right? But at the same time, they do a very good job of not letting you know it's him so it's like they're kind of vague with it so a lot of people they're like man you know i hate watching a show which they normally do is make the main character you know even like the latest mortal Kombat, whatever they make a character out of thin air and he's not even the main character you know what i mean so it's like why like why why can't you just use a main character from the game but no, nah, like uh, they lead up to it. So it's more like a kind of a prequel to the Twisted Metal like games, which sets it up perfect if you ask me, because it, when it gets towards like the middle to the end of the series, you know, you're like, ah, he, he is roadkill, you know? And it even like goes like, yeah, he gets this car. Cause in the beginning he has a Subaru. So you're like, there's no Subaru up in the, the what you would call it. You know what I mean? But he gets like a little upgrade to his car and it becomes roadkill. So it's like, oh shoot, like this guy was roadkill the whole time. And roadkill, I would say roadkill is one of the main characters, you know, he's been around for many, most of the series, you know? So the, of course, if you're gonna have a good guy and a bad guy, roadkill would have been the good guy. You know what I mean? And then say like Sweet Tube, he's one of the like main villainy characters, but Man, let's talk about Sweet Tooth, man. Let's talk about Sweet Tooth. So, they nailed his character down 100%. Like, down to, like, the entire image. He looks just like Sweet Tooth from Twisted Metal Black. You know? Even his backstory is the story from Twisted Metal Black. So, you'll get some of his, like, backstories in the film. I won't ruin that for you. But, um, basically... Spot on, like his image and all that, spot on. Now his character wise, you know, he's a little bit more like a, a joker type. He's kind of like fun, you know what I mean? You can tell he's, he's insane, but he's kind of like funny with it. So, which is cool um, because the series does try to put a little bit more comedy up in it. So it's like, you know, it has this goriness, it has this like darkness to it, but it has the comedy to it, which I don't mind because as a kid playing Twisted Metal, you know, it was kind of fun or a funny type of game, you know, like funny stuff did happen to it. So, like, I don't mind if it pokes fun at it. I don't need it to be a 100 percent serious, serious game or a serious uh, show unless it's like Resident Evil or, or like a, a horror setting where like I don't need all these jokes up in my horror movies. You know what I mean? So. Um, but Sweet Tooth was, man, he, I have to say, like, you, you root for him, man. He, you definitely root for Sweet Tooth, even though he was, like, he was pretty sick. He was pretty, like, demented in, in the game. Uh, I'd say out of all the characters, they, they got him spot on, you know. And it was just so much little Easter eggs they added in for him. I would just say, watch it, man. If anything, I will, I will watch it just for Sweet Tooth, dude. Sweet Tooth was, like basically the main dude you want to watch in this series i don't want to talk for too damn long i think 20 minutes is enough uh but just for me like i would say this is one of the first like video game series hell even like movies as far as like adaptations that i really enjoyed man to the end so don't listen to all the rotten tomato garbage because they're going to be giving it all types of stupid reviews, IGN and all that stuff. Because they, these guys are paid to like bash on stuff that doesn't freaking, you know, go with their agenda. You know what I mean? 
So that's number one. Number one reason I give it pretty good. I give it about like, I, don't know, I give it a 7.9, 8 out of 10, right? I give it a pretty decent review from me. Um, might be a couple things that it might be missing, but that's neither here nor there. It's a fun watch, and at the same time, no political BS. So, love that. Um, but the way they set it for uh, for the second show, I like it a lot just because of the buildup it had for the, the series. So, you know, yeah, man. I definitely just say, give it a watch, man. You guys got the time. If you guys don't have Peacock, hey, bootleg it or something like that. But $5, it's only $5 for Peacock. Yeah, there's commercials and all that, but I don't really care. Um, $5 a month, watch it. Watch some other stuff on there and then cancel the subscription. You know, that's nothing. You know, the movie is like 15 bucks nowadays. So I watched it all in about like three days. You know, it's 10 episodes, but 10 pretty good episodes, man. Characters are pretty good in the game, in the series. I keep confusing it as a game, but in the series. And I rather enjoyed it. So, anyways, I'd say give it a watch. It's probably one of the first, like, decent reviews you ever see from me. <laughs> anyways, I appreciate you guys watching. And uh, let me know what you think about the, the series. You hate it, you love it. Hey, it is what it is. All right, it's your boy, Gat Cognac, signing out. I'll see you on the next one. Laters.